no. Ooh, that's better, right, babe? Yeah. Yeah. She founded an architectural concrete company. He founded a hundred million dollar clothing company. She took the world by storm as a social media star. He took the world by storm as a famous serial entrepreneur. Together we started a business. And had babies. Now we're figuring out the best ways to do both. Join us as we learn from other entrepreneurs going through the same life struggles. As they share their life hacks about success, love, kids. And everything in between. Having something money can't buy. Quote by Bradley. Welcome to this episode of the Pretty and Punk Podcast. My name is Dan Caldwell, and I'm here with my beautiful wife, Ildiko Forenzi. No, 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 no. <laughs> Sorry, I Can introduced you. Can you just let me say my name? Thank okay. you. Go ahead. Ildiko Ferenzi. <laughs> Thank you guys for tuning in. I don't in. know why he does it's, that all I, the time. It's, so I, I'm in a flow, so I'm just going. And just feels like I should. I've heard it so many times now. I just feel like I should just say it. That's so rude. Okay, go ahead. Sorry about that. Um, so thank you guys for um, listening to the podcast, and we wanted to thank you before we got started for sharing the podcast. And um, we really want to get you guys out there. So be sure when you guys give us a review. Put your Instagram handle <laughs> yeah, and even share your business because that's our way of giving back by putting you in the spotlight. <laughs> and on some of our podcasts, we're going to read or sorry, not read your whole <laughs> review, but we're going to give you a shout out. So yeah, and we're, we're going to share it on our on our story. So so if you leave your Instagram, we can tag you in it mm -hmm. so you guys can see that so you don't miss it. And we'll share that on both our personal ones, too, and our podcast ones. So uh, we want to get you guys out there. We really appreciate it. And we know these podcasts, we're interviewing really incredible people here. Yes, and And today are. is 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 a perfect example of that. So we're, we're interviewing these incredible people. When you share this, your friends see that, other people see it. They really get a lot from it, um, and especially ones who have kids, you know, because that's what this whole podcast is about entrepreneurs you, with kids or thinking right. about having kids but really for people who are thinking about having kids or already have kids you hear this you, you can hear this interview and you can see Damn, that these I entrepreneurs are highly successful people talk. <laughs> did you just cut me off i'm, yes, I'm on a roll you here. won't let me say my name i barely talk you just take it's over my gosh it's what is going on dan sorry go ahead anyway so guys i'm really excited about today it's going to be incredible and this man is going to drop some bombs. Are you ready for this? Introduce him. He dropped out of high school at age 16. Looking for where his future would be, he headed to Hollywood to try his hand at being a movie star. But after about six months, he realized that wasn't where he wanted to be. Needing a job, he found he loved sales. He sold everything from artwork to vacuums, but found that he was especially good at selling cars. Rising to the top of management, he transformed this dealership to one of the top in the country. He realized there was a need for systematic training in his industry and decided to develop the answer. Today, he's the founder and CEO of the revolutionary online training platform, Lightspeed VT. He does business with the world's most influential leaders. He's the author of The Real Deal and has a new book coming out, The Hard Way. He's been featured in Forbes, Huffington Post, and many other top publications. He's the host of the hugely successful show, The Dropping Bombs Podcast. He's the husband to his beautiful wife, Melissa, and father to two incredible daughters. Please welcome Brad Lee. Hey, Brad. Welcome to the Pretty and Punk Podcast. Welcome, hon. We're so excited to have you here. Man, I'm excited to be here. Thank you very much. Yeah. So, uh, you know, we, we've seen a, so much great content on you, mm. and we're a regular watcher of your show, and you drop a lot of bombs on there. Uh, we actually loved your interview with Jesse Itzler. It was great. Oh, yeah. So much value. Yeah. So much good information on there. Um, but our podcast is a little bit slated towards something that we found that we didn't find a lot from you. 
Um, we couldn't. We know that uh, you always give and deliver and great content to entrepreneurs and other business people out there. But we want to jump into some of the things that uh, I know you know, hold near and dear to your heart. How you are an entrepreneur and also have this incredible family. Mm. So I know some of your kids work for you and uh, and you got some some good things going on. You got two little daughters. So we want to jump into all that. Well, let's go. Yeah, let's, let's do, do it. it. Just so you know, I'm not going to be your normal guest. <laughs> of course not. Extraordinary. And we, we don't expect it. you to. We love I it. I had a lot of lessons I had to learn the hard way. I've got six kids from four women, but I can explain. Wow. Yeah, I'm, I'm sure that comes with an explanation, but that's okay. We, <laughs> I think we we both had situations in our past too, and I think mm-hmm. it, you know it's how we learn from those things and right. things that change us and make us different. We uh, are trying to do things right this time, and that's why we actually started this podcast is because we wanted to lean into entrepreneurs that are going through things in their life that it, you know are making it hard for them. And especially running a business and raising kids. And as entrepreneurs, I feel a lot of people look to us thinking everything's perfect. And it's nice to pull back their curtains and say, this is what's going on. I know Dan and I have done it because it, when we were going through the hardest time of our lives, we decided that's when it was time to pull back the curtain and say, look, guys, this is what we're really going through and it resonated so well with our audience that we decided to give birth to not not only our second miracle child, but this podcast. Yeah, so we have, that's how the Pretty and Punk podcast got started. <laughs> yeah. Uh, anyway, so, let's let's get into it. I want to roll it back a little bit. I want to go back to to young Brad. I know a little bit about your childhood, but maybe our audience doesn't. I, I heard the story about you selling the chocolate bars and making sure people had the the roofing or the roofer's phone number. But like, how did that come about? Like, that's extraordinary. That's like so unique for a young boy to be so... In tune uh, as an entrepreneur early on. As an entrepreneur, such a great seller. Because in your blood, where did that come from? Well, I mean, the school handed me a box of chocolate and said, go sell it to your family. You know, go, go sell these. And so when I went home, my family was kind of blue collar. They weren't buying any chocolate. (laughs) <laughs> so I knew I had to go outside the family. So I just started wrapping on some doors. And after a few doors, I realized, man, I got to come up with some sort of spiel. So I mm. developed one that, you know, hid the candy bar behind my back. And you know, when they answered the door, I said, do you know, do you know the phone number to a good roof repairman? They're like, what? And seeing this little kid say that. Then I'd whip out the candy bars and say, because when you taste one of these, you're going to go through the roof. <laughs> that, that, that's that's really just um I don't even know like that's a great question because I've never really thought about it but growing up I was just part of a blue collar family you know good old American hard-working blue collar family my dad wasn't rich by any stretch of the imaginations um he wasn't really that poor either mm. but but you know we had Christmas presents we had food you know we got school clothes most years when I went out you know for breakfast I was kind of one of those kids that pretty much got told what they're going to eat. You know, Mm. I got short stacks. Didn't matter if it was breakfast or not. Like, you know, Mm -hmm. there was a lot of us. So anyway, just kind of grew up with the dad that was like, children should be seen and not heard. You know, those type. Yeah, Yeah. exactly. And you grew up with your dad by yourself, right? It was just your, your dad who raised you. No, no, no. He, he, he and my real mom divorced when I was two. And there was four of us at that time with one brand new one. So my mom, my real mom kept the brand new baby and four of us got thrown into an orphanage, a little foster home to get, to get like taken care of, I guess. And then my grandmother on my dad's side told my dad, you better get your booty over there and get your kids or you got big issues. Uh, My dad took responsibility, came to get us. But by the time he brought us home, there was, there was a, 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 a stepmom my whole life. So, I had I had oh, heard the mom really. Would you consider yourself lower middle class? Um, no, I consider myself upper class, even when we didn't have money. <laughs> really? Yeah, you know, but I hear I, I would expect that answer from you because I've heard a lot of you kind of that. That's how you slayed a lot of your conversations. That you always kind of find the the glasses half full conversation. And gratitude, lots of gratitude through times that people <laughs> would say that you are suffering or times were tough, but you find the bright side and the blessing 
I feel that got me through a lot of things in my life, too. My parents separating, my brother's death. You have to find the blessings. So if you guys want to, you know, pause and get a box of tissues. <laughs> no, no, no. But uh, I want to know, like, what affected you when you were young? Who influenced you not only to become an entrepreneur? Where do you think that came from? You're this great salesman. Where did all this come from? Where, what developed you? Who made you? Who, who made Brad Lee? You know, I think life made Brad Lee. Um, mm -hmm. A lot of the various people in and around me growing up. But, you know. To me, to me, it's like, you know, the bright side comes from knowing that it could always be worse. You know what I mean? Right. Like, like I tried the hard labor route and it's not the route to take. You know, my dad was a hard worker. He died, you know, broke. Most of the hard workers, you know, are the brokest financially that, you know, and if people ever realize that it's like, well, then why is hard work touted as what you need to succeed? Because it's not right. That's I mean, yeah, I know we see that. I'm just like, I really try to dive down. I know, you know, me and my wife had a, a conversation last week about are entrepreneurs made or are they born? And, you know, we kind of both sit on both sides of those fence. But I, I think ultimately it's a little of both, right? You know, it's like there's something in you maybe that gives you, you know, it's like why are certain, certain people are smarter than others? Certain people have a higher IQ than others. So there's something in you, right? There's something that your brain was born with. But there's also, you're affected by your surroundings. There's something that also makes you who you are. And I'm sure a lot of what, uh, you know, you having to sell door to door, those candies at six years old, I'm sure that played something into it. I'm sure there's other pieces. Have you ever exam, you know, went through your life and kind of said, what else has affected me and made me who I am today? You know, I think at that young age, I didn't realize uh, because I got a job with hard labor thought I was going to fight forest fires, right? Went up there, had to oh, get up wow. at 4am, you rode a cold bus up to the mountains where you got dropped off. And now your job was to basically, I thought fight forest fires, but when I first <laughs> got there, I showed up and they're like, grab that backpack right there. And you look over and there's this big rubber bag filled with water. Right. And, and literally they said, put that on your back walk up and down and find stumps that are smoldering and squirt them. So that oh. night oh, geez. I got poison oak and it was just this crazy old story. And I quit in like two days and everyone said I was the dumbest person in the world for quitting, but oh. hard work. I just don't, I just, I don't agree with like, you don't have to break your back. There's people that enjoy it, but you don't have oh. to. Yeah. If that's not your path. Yeah. So I, so I quit that job, went home and everyone laughed at me. And then, opened up the newspaper, saw a job in sales, went in and applied and started killing it. And then, you know, built a career in sales, which led me to start a company in sales training, which led me to develop the software that's now made me an eight figure, almost nine figure entrepreneur. And, you know, a lot of contracts, backstabbings and, and, and incidents over the last 20 years, just, you know, conditioned me and taught me, you know, Ooh. what you usually can't learn without doing it. But right. nowadays with social media and the, and the connectivity we have, I mean, dude, who can get a hold of freaking Dan Caldwell? <laughs> you like, can. Just, just pop. I know. But like now with social media, dude, the dude starts to tap out, you know, or one of them, go, go, go DM him, like get a hold of him. Mm -hmm. So like right. we can learn from people that took all these years to learn things like never before. Right. Yeah. So let's go back just a little bit. You're... You started this company, Lightspeed VT, is like, I mean, it's another level, right? I call it um, like Kajabi on steroids, right? And you have guys like Grant Cardone and Tony, Tony Robbins. Robbins. Yeah, but Dan, if, but, but to say that, it would, it would be to say like Bellagio is like Motel 6 on steroids. <laughs> well, you're right. You're right. But I, it's, I'm just trying to, for our audience, explain it to them kind of the concept of what it is the replacement would be if they were using Kajabi, you could actually replace it with, with uh, light speed. Right. I mean, wouldn't that be a good analogy? Yeah. But that's like saying, if you can stay at motel six, you can stay at the Bellagio. <laughs> I know you, you got the best. You got the, it's the best. At the end of the day, listen, Kajabi is meant to host videos behind mm -hmm. a paywall. Light right. is, is, is meant to get you to learn 
and implement what it is you've learned. So one's a learning technology, one's a posting technology. They're two different things. But but yeah, I guess you could you know say it's it's like that. I hear what you're saying. Okay, okay. I'm just trying to get. I know, I get it. I'm just for the audience. I'm just trying to give them something. Yeah, but that's like saying, what's the difference between a kiddie pool and a water park? Dan, I got it. Dan, I got you dug it. yourself. I'm, I know. I'm juggling the baby over here and I, you dug yourself a hole. I knew it was going to be a like hole, this. a graveyard. I knew it. <laughs> I knew it. But I had to think of something to be able to explain it to the audience. So, but let's go back to, um, you dropped out of high school in 11th grade. And how do you go from, uh, because this is important for anybody who, you know, is, I didn't, I didn't go to college, but you know, for anybody who's like in that same position, how do you go from a high school dropout to starting this, you know, I, I don't even want to put a number on your company, but I know it's probably worth north of a hundred million dollars. Um, and I got to think that, you know, to build something like that, you had to have gone through a lot along the way. Track us a little bit. How did you, after leaving high school, start this company? Well, I left high school and didn't start Lightspeed until I was 30. Right. Mm-hmm. So there's good context right there. Yeah. So there was 12 years of running around, trying to get rich, trying to mm-hmm. enrich myself for myself, looking to get paid. And I didn't really care how I got paid. And anyone who I came in contact with, I was trying to figure out how to leverage them to get paid. And then at 30, it flipped. I started to, I started to accidentally want to help people. And literally it sounds cliche, but I, I literally started like actually caring about, you know, helping other people rather than myself. And then that's when really everything kind of started happening. But you know, I went to LA, I went to New York, you know, I slept on a bunch of couches. I tried a bunch of businesses. I had a bunch of sales jobs. You acted for a little bit, didn't you? Yeah. I was going to be a movie star. And by the way, that era might not end because now I can afford to make my own movie. And from what I hear, whoever writes the check is who decides who plays who. (laughs) Absolutely. It's true. So I might, I might eventually uh, make a movie and finish with, with the acting thing, but I started out wanting to be an actor. I, I had a couple starring roles in a movie set up and, and somehow nepotism got in the way. And literally they, they wrote the owner's kid or the producer's kid into my part and, and, and kind of bumped me to like a little couple of opening lines. <laughs> that happens all the time. Yeah. But I thought I'm going to, I'm going to go get rich real quick and be right back. Right. It was, right. I, you know, I just go get rich real quick. But I didn't know that it took forever. But that 12 years, you know, I was just kind of, you know, selling things and and, and being a, what I what I call a, a jerk. Well, I call it something else. But for this show, it's a jerk. Yeah. You were just missing something. Well, dude, I didn't learn. I had no parents, man. Nobody taught me that ethics and integrity and freaking, you know, caring about other people, like all this stuff you hear about now, which makes things pretty obvious. Nobody taught me. I had to learn the hard way. So at the end of the day, that's my book, by the way, the hard way. Oh, really? Lessons lessons I learned the hard way. So you don't have to. But ultimately, at 30 years old is really when I started Lightspeed. So you're like a 15 year overnight success. Correct. But I did have four children uh, during 18, well, 17 to 30. So walk us through that a little bit. That's that's a little bit I'm jumping ahead for us but I mean since you bring it up I had three that's children tough. prior to and you know while I was building my business and it's a hard time when you're building your company and you're kind of going through things in your life and um you know things are sometimes they're super hard sometimes they're growing and they take a lot of attention just lots of things going on in your life walk me through that for a minute Well again when I was 17 I made a lot of stupid mistakes it was crazy because the it was all all I did was hung out with her one time and boom. And, Mm -hmm. and then because I was young and immature and she lived 30 miles away, she said, if you don't show up every day, you can't show up at all. I thought, yeah, whatever. I didn't even think about it. To be honest with you, it was, I was too young to even grasp what she was saying, but literally she meant it because I, you know, didn't show up for like a week and a half one time. And when I, when I went back there, she was gone. The baby was gone. And, and her family said, stay away from her. Mm. You're, a punk, you're a punk. You're not going to school. You're a loser. Stay away from her. And so ultimately, I didn't get a chance to raise that one. Coincidentally, mm. though, 14 years later, she showed up, which I knew she would. 
in uh-huh. Las Vegas, you know, she was told this whole story her whole life that her real her her stepdad was a real dad. She didn't know about me till she was 14. Mm. But anyway, Sorry. I got a lot of stories for you yeah. guys. The family show, right? Yeah. Hey, there's such a thing as a broken family, you know. I think where you're going is really important because what scares me the most, and I want to save people this road because they're like, oh, you can just get a divorce or you could this and you can that. And it's like, why don't we try to prevent that stuff before it happens? Because it's not it's not the gravy train. Um, there's games that are played between exes and there's just so much that goes on that you can't really talk about till the kids are Eight, you know, 18 and, and out of the house and there's not that crazy dynamic that goes on. I really wish that people wouldn't make it sound like it's just a walk in the park and you guys can break up. There's a lot that goes on in between. So thank you for for sharing that. Like it gets uh, it gets real dirty and scary for some people. Yeah. I had three children prior and, you know, I mean, I, I love those kids, but I can't be in their life all the time now because they live with their stepdad and their mom. There's things that are that make it hard for me because I would I would love to be in their life and be able to affect them in certain make ways. Certain decisions that yeah, you're make not decisions in their to life. Make, and that's tough. Too. I'm sure. That's what tough. was that like? I think you have two sons and four daughters. Is that right? Correct. Two oh. sons, four daughters. And and so what was that like as you you're building your well actually at that time you're probably. You're starting to, you're a salesman, you get into car sales and you have some, a couple more children at that time? Yeah. Well, again, I mean, as the story goes, uh, the first one was the at 17 high school date, I guess you'd call it. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then about a year and a half later, I thought, you know, I remembered it. It was quite fun. I thought I'd try it again. <laughs> so, I tried it again. You're really good at what you do, Brad. <laughs> yeah, well, I tried it again. Another one. Yeah. Now, this time it was with someone that I wasn't even, you know, aware of, meaning meaning it was like a quick, what do you call it? You know, uh, mm-hmm. right. random. Yeah. Yep, yep. Random has been going on for years. Yeah. But anyway, it, it, at the end of the day, again, I was immature and stupid. But long story short, another one popped out. This one was opposite. This one I didn't take responsibility. So I'm like, no, 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 no. I don't even know that person. And, da, 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 and went through all that nonsense. Right. Mind, that is mine. So all of that youth stupidity between the ages of 17 and like 23, mm-hmm. I chalk up and forgive myself for being a dumb, uh, a dumb, dumb because of immaturity and lack right. of parenting and lack of core values and lack of ethics and et cetera, et cetera. Mm-hmm. Looking back, you know, I wish I would have just, you know, turned around, started from day one, but I may not be where I am. So believe it or not, right. sometimes sometimes you, you you might think you regret, but what if you could go back and it wasn't the same? What if you ended up somebody worse? What if you ended up somebody that can't provide now at all mm-hmm. to sacrifice time with the kids? And at the end of the day, I, I just don't think, you know, regret is, is worth focusing no. on. I, I think moving forward now, I've got six kids from four women. Everybody's happy. Uh, fortunately, even though I didn't know what I was doing, they all turned out pretty good so far. You yeah. Know, I, say, I say so far, cause you never know, man, mm. like, like, like kids could go off the rail. So can people, That's right. right. Like people right. and kids are different, but the, the, the kid part to me is like, you know, adolescent, you know, child. So now I have two new ones, five and seven, and that's oh. really where I've been an actual parent that I can contribute right. to this show. The yeah. other is a, the other is a tale of don't do these things. As right. A, yeah. You know, but but to that degree, Dan, you you can, you know, you can build a business with kids, obviously. Yes. Mm-hmm. A lot of people doing it. But there's a lot of people out there not building a business using their kids as an excuse. Amen. You said it. Mm-hmm. And, that, and, you know, let's focus on those people because, again, at the end of the day, if you're sitting here going, yeah, yeah, I love this show. Yeah, yeah. And all it, all it's doing is justifying you not doing something because you have kids and Dan thinks you should spend as much time as ever. And Ildiko thinks, you know, it's like, folks, although, yes, there's very valuable lessons in doing it right the first time. Mm-hmm. At the end of the day, man, you can build a business and have kids. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. That, yes. Let me ask you this. So this is an important question. We 
we love our businesses, right? As we build our businesses, we love our businesses. Um, both your daughters were obviously born during that time. Your daughters that live with you today, they were born during that time you were building your business. You love your business. You love your family. How do you have some sort of work-life balance at that time when you're, when you're having these kids and you're building your company? Take us back to that time, kind of like when that's all going on. Well, let me take you, like, if this is a tale of woes, let me take you back to the, to the two boys. Cause I was building this business as they were young. Okay. Forcing my first wife. Right. And that, you know, there was times where I was down on child support three months and, oh, lived, and I would go over to their house to drop them off or pick them up. And, and old mama bear wasn't happy. Now, right. keep in mind, old mama bear had money. She wasn't starving. She just wanted mine. You know, <laughs> yeah. so, so, so at the end of the day, I had to make decisions on when or if I was going to pay child support, rent, my car payment, uh, 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 somebody that's on my staff or, you know, because I mean, there was a gap there. So, I mean, mm. I had to make choices of who I was going to pay. I didn't have unlimited amounts of money. Mm. So, so those times were a lot more, I would say, uh, kid free, meaning even though I did pick them up every single weekend and I did hang out with them, I didn't spend quality time necessarily. And I still built the business, but to the point, you know, when you go back to those two, my actions were different. These two now, cause they're adults now, these right. two I've been, you know, they've been there since I've had a little bit of money and intelligence, if that makes sense. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So I've had three opportunities to raise three different sets and mm -hmm. trust me, I'm getting better and better. And I can tell you right now, there's so many people that I hear say, you know, I have kids and I'm like, and yeah, you can do both. Yeah. And how do I handle it now? I still do this, Dan squeaky wheel gets the grease. Meaning there's a lot of times my kids are home with my wife, very happy, playing board games, doing whatever. And yes, I would love to be there, mm -hmm. but I can't. Mm -hmm. I can't. Why? Well, because I want them comfortable playing board games and I want them flying private. And I want them in certain situations that unfortunately due to our society take money. So when the, when the, when the banks are full, you know, that I have more time and, and I spend a little over there. When the banks get low, I had, I had my focus over here a little bit. Right. At the end of the day, it's, it's, I think it's a juggling act. I think, right. I think it's yeah. the squeaky wheel gets the grease. If my daughter started having issues of any kind, I'd stay home for two weeks straight. Why? Well, because it's my business. No one's firing me. Right. I don't care what's going on. I've cleared my schedule in 20 years. I've cleared my schedule about three times to where it's like, I tell them here, cancel everything, tell them, sorry, I got to go. Boom. So what's that? that? Well, that's waiting until the wheel over there is getting louder than this wheel. That's the only way I can figure it out so far. What have you guys found? No, that's that, pretty much what yeah. we do. We fill our buckets where we need to. I, I think that's the best way, right? Yeah. To, you know, when There's you're no juggling. There's no perfect balance. Uh, I mean, even traditional date nights. I have little ones now, paid. Brad, We've little ones. Like I have a two-year-old and a four-year-old, you know, and also I have ones that just, you know, I have one that just. And you're right. And you people in college. come to us, they say, oh, we can't start the business because we have kids. We can't start a podcast. I'm like, dude, my babies are stepping into the podcast sometimes because she needs to be nursed and all this crazy stuff that we can get through it. And with our audience, they need to see that this stuff happens. This is real life. Yeah. I mean, we could have a nanny I mean, here, we but we decided we didn't want people in the house. We just didn't want, we just don't like people but in our- not even that. Mostly <laughs> I want our audience to see if you cannot afford a nanny, it could still get done. And here's my son trying to see who <laughs> Bradley is. This is Bradley. That's oh, Bradley. thanks. Thanks, brother. Your two little daughters are beautiful. Oh, yeah. They're absolutely beautiful. I, I was looking at a couple of pictures of them. I, it, it, I, it seems you kind of like there's. You could say hi and then and then go back to doing say hi, your buddy. business. Okay. Hi. Say hi, Brad. Say hi, Brad. Say I was researching you. I was researching you. <laughs> What'd you find out? Oh, he said, "What'd you find out?" What you find no, out? no. He's asking you, "What'd you find did, out?" Did you find he was a good businessman? Yeah. Yes. <laughs> 
Okay. So later you can share one of his quotes with them. Okay? So what do you like most about being a dad, Brad? Stuff like what just happened right there. <laughs> yeah. It's the best, right? It's like, this is why sometimes, like, this is actually the most the kids have ever been in this podcast. This is a, like, they, they will sometimes, I mean, he does a little extra at the end and uh, she does too. You know, they'll say a little something, but they've actually never, she's wandered through one time. I and, said to go back to school right now. Okay. Yeah. Come here, baby. It's just the way the day is, right? You know, and that's why there's two of us. And we both, you know, sometimes I'll take over the kids. Sometimes she'll take over the kids. But, uh, you know, I really enjoy being a dad, especially, you know, I enjoy, I, I love my other kids. They're amazing. They're all incredible. Um, uh, they were all great at what they do. My daughter played soccer for the University of Hawaii. Uh, my son is an incredible baseball player. My other son is just super smart. And, you know, it's just like they all have their own things. And I love how each one kind of has their own thing. But uh, do you think, what do you love most about being a dad as far as like it, their learning or how you interact with them? What, do you, what, what, what have you picked out about dad life that made it special, that made you have to do it? Because truly there's a lot of entrepreneurs out there that I'm noticing more and more who don't have kids, who've just made the decision not to have kids. And that's all right. You know, everybody has their own path. But I like the legacy path. I, I enjoy knowing that my kids are going to live on with my words and my life and things will live on past us. You know what I mean? I don't know if you get any of that. It's not that important to me about the, the legacy and the living on part. Uh, I, you know, what I like most about it is is the observation, the privilege of observation and and when they grow up, you see them evolve. I think just, I think the ability to just watch that in real time is the benefit, is the most, my most favorite thing about being a dad, is being able to watch them evolve and change and develop personalities and, and, and you know, help them figure things out, and make sure that they can survive on their own and figure things out on their own and, you know, socialize properly, et cetera, et cetera. And then just watching their personalities change is unbelievable. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's the best, right? As they start to grow and they start to take on those certain personalities. I noticed that he's he was memorizing quotes. That's his uh, new thing. Yesterday, he like wants to memorize like all these quotes. Yeah, and so, Greg Cardell. And, and yeah, so he's getting really good at it. But I it. feel like we planted that seed with billionaires, that business, because it's around great entrepreneurs. Yeah, we have a company from that, the past, where and we then sell he came up with historical documents, like yeah. Washington letters and Lincoln letters. Steve Jobs. And we, we frame them with a quote by the person. We're and, nerds. In a real modern version frame, you know, not like your old grandpa's brown frame. It's a nice black beautiful frame with this $200,000 document inside or $30,000 document. But so it's just, he's, he's kind of grown up around us building right. that business. So that, that seed was planted and now he wants to know the people's quotes that we're interviewing. It's very interesting. Um, anyway, enough about that. I want to know how has your life changed as an entrepreneur, as an entrepreneur, since you became a father, how about this last time around? It changes a little bit based on knowing you're an entrepreneur, knowing you have the ability to do whatever you want, or theoretically. Mm. It adds a little pressure because now when you're not there for a birthday, it's a choice. It's not your boss. You have no one to blame mm -hmm. yourself. And right. so ultimately, it's, it's, it's made me a lot more accountable to you know sacrifice. But I always say, look, if you're not willing to sacrifice for what you want, what you want becomes the sacrifice. People mm, always right. ask me like, you know, well, how do you choose between work and kids? Well, again, when it comes down to choosing between work and kids, it's squeaky wheel unless it, unless there's a major issue. But, but obviously at the very top of that would be, I got to close my eyes and, and ask myself if I had to choose one, which one would it be? Mm. Right. Well, clearly my kids. Mm -hmm. So they're going to take priority every time, mm -hmm. but folks, they don't need all your time. Like, right. Yeah. Your kid true. just said, "Let's go back to school." They're tired of you guys. Yeah. <laughs> they don't need. They don't need they, constant freaking interaction by their parents. You guys, trust me when I tell you, man. We that's we true. a lot of us are spending too much time with our kids. Yeah. Like there is such a thing. You no, know, you know, California, we're still in this COVID thing. When you start disliking your children, okay, you're spending yep. too much time with them. 
Absolutely. A lot of people yeah. might think, well, dude, uh, you know, that's rude. Who does that? There's been plenty of times I dislike my children. <laughs> well, we, we, you I'm know, we found, yet, I think we had this conversation. <laughs> Yours are all cute and saying yeah. things. Wait till they get up. They start becoming obnoxious and doing stuff you don't like. <laughs> <laughs> no, we said, um, I think we had this conversation wait, wait, about having you, nannies. Before you move to that conversation, I want to make sure, because there are some spouses that don't give the support that you need. For example, if Dan has to be away, um, I will say, daddy's gone doing this and this and this for us. He's doing this for us. Um, he's not taking himself away. I feel a lot of times when people have gone through divorces or splits, there's those crazy games like, oh, your dad doesn't want to see you or your mom does not want to see you. Um, how's your spouse right now on that? And how important is that to you, that support? Is she on your team and, uh, and letting you know or letting your children know that this is for us? Yes, or she wouldn't be my spouse. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah, you, you guys have been together for over 10 years, right? Yeah, but I'd blow somebody out if if I were at work and she was sitting there planting negativity into my oh, children God. about me because yeah. I'm at work. So to answer your question, and, and that happens. So mm. to answer your question, you know, absolutely she's on the same page and uh, she she's great. I mean, at the end of the day, when I met her, you know, I asked her, what do you want to do? you know, in life, like, you know, what do you want to do? What are your goals, ambitions, and dreams? And all she wanted to do is have kids and stay at home and raise them. And I'm thinking, how perfect. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Cause oh. it, so we're on the exact same. It's a great when fit. Yeah. And when I'm gone, she's totally supportive. Like I don't get phone calls all day. Where are you? Where are you? I need help. I need a break. I need, da, 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 da. you know, and I can't imagine if I did, because I it, it's tough raising kids, man, especially mm -hmm. when you're all alone and the and the spouse is somewhere else yeah. working all day, interacting with adults all day, and it gets tough. And I think sometimes yeah. as the as the let's call it the entrepreneur, the traveler, right. we forget how tough it is and we start to underappreciate the the mental capacity required to sit there at home 24-7 and raise excellent children. That's hard yeah, to that's do. That's tough. I mean, we're, yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah I could see that. Uh, yeah, I think I, I try to come home. If I come home and she's been with the kids, and sometimes she's gone too because she has business too. So, um, you know, but, if she's gone, I've also, watched the kids while she's at a Maxim party. She's she's partying at a Maxim party on a red carpet, and I'm it. I'm in a hotel you watching guys, kids. Stop. <laughs> you guys were in the car because I, I was nursing. I said, I'm not going to No, take I was at a hotel job. watching kids. But like, sometimes that's my, what I do, right? You know, it's like I'm able to do that. I'm able to help her with her business. And I wasn't partying because I was breastfeeding. Why does it, why do you blow this? <laughs> I'm just saying what happened. You were at the Maxim party. Was I jealous. wasn't. Was but jealous. but it was no. I mean, she she got invited to some of these parties that well, I didn't I happen to go to. It was my. I got paid to we do both the red go. carpet and all that other stuff. Yes. Anyway. So. Um, screenshot right now if you take a screenshot and everyone passes it around you'll see why she was invited and you <laughs> absolutely i get it i totally get it oh, but uh yeah i mean that's that, i think that's important for you know everybody and when i come home and she's been at home with the kids i try to take over you know so that she's has that break for a second and she's able to relax and because i know you know the kids will be running around the house jumping off the couches are, don't, don't, well, don't plant seeds. Well, you. you know, I mean, he's he's got a lot of energy. So, what about the people that don't think like that? Okay. Yeah, I just think it's important, and it's great that you brought up that point because I, I I I agree, it is important mm -hmm. for for us as as husbands when we come home or wives when we come home if the whoever's the spouse has been at home with the kids all day yeah. to know that we've been out interacting with adults and and that sometimes when you come home that it's important that we kind of help our spouse. And we're also Relax in a, a situation bit. where we've kind of pivoted last, well, when the baby was born, I got really sick um, and I had to have life-saving surgery. And they told me I couldn't pick up the babies for six months. And a lot of things changed. Like he was, he was the wheels of two of his brick and mortar places that went bankrupt and just so much were so much, so many things were happening, and thank God we had other businesses. But these things happen in life, and yeah. and uh, and we did hire someone to help 
for a little bit because I had this newborn baby and I couldn't um yeah I couldn't pick her up so I had to live like vicariously through them like as he's holding them and I'm close and they would hold the babies to breath anyway life is crazy but god that was a blessing because it just it makes me be so grateful it just made me look at parenting in a different way and I said let's pivot where we can include the kids this is such an this this time is going to go by so fast let's do businesses where we can include them and have them by our side cuz gosh you, you don't know how we're, how long you're going to be here for so yeah the doctors <gasps> the doctors gave her 5 years to live i said i said listen that's oh he was going to throw the doctors that's out a doctor <laughs> yeah i mean that's that's, They're not God. that's some They're not guy God. who God thinks he God. knows what you know that th- your heart he thinks he knows how you're you're eating. He thinks he knows how you're how you're taking on life, and you're not 80 years old. You know, it's like this is this is a condition that usually affects people that are a lot older. I said you can't. You got to get out Whatever of that mindset is, right now. I'm not even supposed to work, but how can I live life having my children watch me just give up on everything? You know, you can't do that. Not with little ones. They see and they watch you. So, so let's get this back to let's, let's get back on uh, a happy note. Um, it is. Happy. Yeah, it's it is. Happy. It turned it's out blessing. happy. We're great. We're we, we're doing a lot Every of day is a fun gift. things and enjoying our kids. Mm-hmm. I want to know. Do you think, and do you even care? Do you think your kids will be entrepreneurs? Oh, yes. Like and why do you think that? Because I'll I'll make sure of it. <laughs> <laughs> it's hard work, you know. For a lot of people, I'm sure you've you've. It's it's not easy but being an enjoyable. entrepreneur. That you know, there's a lot of super. I think you have to have a certain temperament. Wouldn't you agree? That like they're super super lows and they're super super highs and you have to be prepared for both of those, you know. Having a job, you kind of like you're in this middle ground space, and you know there's not a lot of movement either way. But I think being an entrepreneur, you can have these super super highs and sometimes super super lows. And if you're not prepared to deal with those things, they affect people in different ways. I think that's what's allowed me to survive in this space. Is that super lows don't bother me too much and when the when those things well, come on i always know that last. we're going to fix this i already know i'm going to fix this i just got to figure this out in a second but i know not everybody thinks like that what about you well mine will be entrepreneurs regardless <laughs> I'll, I'll insist upon it and i'll ensure it. so they have the freedom that an entrepreneur gets to have right like to me, li- listen, it ain't about money. Like it's about freedom. Right. And, yeah. and I'm going to insist and make sure that my kids have freedom. Mm. Now, that makes them an entrepreneur. They Absolutely. may not be very good ones, but they're going to be ones. I think they're going to be great salesmen just because you'll rub off on them. And uh, and I think if you're in sales, you can do anything, right? And I think you even said that being a be, even being a car salesman, you're kind of your own businessman because you yes, do a little bit make that. Look, everybody's in sales. Right. Name somebody who's not in sales. No, you have to be in, you're selling all Everybody the time. Everybody is in sales. Everybody's selling in something. Sales. You, everybody's selling. Just some are good at it and some aren't so good at it. Right. That's what I tell people. I say, you, everyone's in sales. The, the question is, is, are you any good at it? Yeah. And, and you're doing it whether you're good or bad. So you might as well get good at it. But, you know, to, to deny that you're in sales because you have a salary position, you're still in sales. You're just not getting paid properly. I feel like I'm a good salesman, but in a more, I'm more of a heartfelt salesman. Usually I'm raising money or something like that. So I'm pitching and it's a different type of selling technique, right? Like I'm not, I sell from my heart. You, you like have a real technique to it. Well, there is technique just like MMA, dude. If you have a white belt, you get in the ring with a black belt. Yeah, no, you better be ready. (laughs) You better be trained. What would you do if you knew you had to fight a black belt? Oh, I'd be training my ass off. Mm-hmm. That's the answer. That's the answer. But the problem is, is people don't. Oh, I'm not in sales. Well, yes, you are. You, you were in sales the day we pop out the womb, you know, so so right. the techniques are just needing practiced, you know, drilled and rehearsed. So, like, for example, to get past any objection, you just need to identify and isolate it and then solve, yeah. solve the problem with logic. Once you get to know the steps to a sale and the and the and the, you know, how to practice those till you're really smooth at it. Your life will improve all the way around. Your relationships yeah. improve. And by the way, relationships is, is the new currency. So so all you have to do to be in sales is do what you said. Use your heart 
attract, you know, approach it as a relationship, not a sale, and you'll do much better just from that. I agree. I agree. I still want I still want to go sit and pick your brain, and sit down and listen to you sell. Uh, I watched some of your videos. I, I I didn't know that you actually trained salespeople like that in that way. I didn't know that that's how your business started until I was researching you. I just knew that you had this great um, company and that you were that you were a former salesman, but I didn't know that that's how your your company was born out of born out of your sales technique. Well, yeah, I started training other people how to close and persuade and make a lot of money selling. And then I realized that training was not effective as it used to be. So I did some research and developed a software to deliver my training. And it worked so well that I just started licensing it to all the other experts. You know, my mission in life is to get the knowledge from the people who have it to the people who need it, because I think that's how we're successful. So I was going to be selfish and keep the technology to myself and play small or open it up and collaborate. And now I've got, you know, some of the biggest names using the system. You know, I can text them, FaceTime, get information, get mentoring, coaching, et cetera, et cetera. And I'd be a hypocrite if I wasn't out there teaching people what I know. Right. Because again, I could take an average salesperson, teach them some basic things and have them, you know, make three, three to five times more money. So why wouldn't I? If you have knowledge, you should feel obligated to get it out to the world. That's that's like such, you know, that's that's echoing today more than ever. We're seeing all these people who are, you know, that's, I mean, I I guess maybe not everybody. I'm sure everybody has something to teach, but how do you feel about people who maybe you're teaching things that aren't good? Do you just feel like that'll figure, I mean, if they're, maybe they're not so good salesmen or they're teaching bad technique. But there's a lot of people out there teaching right now. Well, I, I judge people by their fruits. Right. Good book says. <laughs> Just how they deliver, huh? He says, thou shalt not judge. But he also says, you'll know my children by their fruit. So that lets us become fruit inspectors. How did you and uh, your wife named Melissa? Yep. How did you and Melissa meet? And how do you guys keep your relationship strong? My friend the, said, stop by and have some sushi. We're right by your house. Eat sushi. Uh-huh. <laughs> And so I stopped by to eat sushi, and then they told her the same thing. Oh, your friend set you up. Yeah, so she stopped by, and I didn't know she was going to be there. She didn't know I was going to be there, and then we never left. That's awesome. The, the The other question was, how do we keep the relations strong? You right. Know, I don't. I don't know that we do. I think. I think so far, thankfully, it's it's naturally stayed strong. I don't think we've had to right. work much. I don't think we've had to, to, to put in the effort. I think it's just a natural physical attraction, but can you blame her? <laughs> Brad. Hey, with those good looks, goodness gracious. I know. I wouldn't let my wife around you. You can, you can, and I'll tell you why. I'll tell you why. Extreme level of ethics on my part for sure. And I'm assuming. Of course, of course. Of course. As well. I just Absolutely. mean you're so good looking. I don't know if you're I good looking. Stop it. You just he wants me to like. <laughs> uh, she, I see. I like her. I like her to go. Hey, you know, after you're the podcast, so she'll go. You know, you're really good looking too. You know, you don't have to feel like that. And then she'll comfort me for the rest it's of the day. His way of getting <laughs> extra attention. <laughs> well, I can tell you this. I, mm-hmm. you know, the the relationship if it starts to you know come apart, I would think, especially for the sake of the kids. You know, I would say to somebody if they're if they're starting to get bored or 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 you know drift apart, that you just practice inclusion. You know, it, sometimes you go home and you and you're talking to your friends and you're talking to your team and you're talking to all these other people. When you talk to her, you know, it's like what what do you need? Like like it's almost like you're distract you're being distracted here, and you know people can sense that. And so yeah. just remember inclusion. Cause I include her in things mm-hmm. I, when I go home, I'm telling her, you know, this happened, this happened, man, we're this far from being billionaires. Uh-huh. And like, you know, it keeps, it keeps her fired up and, you know, I'm not there all day, uh, every day. So, so the fondness makes the heart or the, whatever you call it, uh, nearness. What is it called? I don't, I don't know, know, but I but know I, what you're trying to I know what you mean. Abs- yeah, 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 yeah. The absence. Yeah, yeah. It makes the heart grow fonder. fonder. So, yep. Fortunately, we haven't had to do a lot of work to stay strong. That's great. 
That's great. Hey, this is a hard question to ask, but, um, you know, what did you learn from your previous relationships, the ones that failed? What are your lessons and, and, and how are you applying them to keeping this one so strong and successful? Maybe use that word successful. Share with us. Well, I mean, I learned a lot. I learned, um, get a good lawyer. No, just joking. <laughs> oh, God. I learned, I, I, you know, I, if I can do it all over again, I never probably would have been divorced, which means I never would have ever had my two kids now. So again, I'm thankful mm -hmm. in all cases, but the things that I learned is, to apply to this relationship. Well, not only that, but you just, you just don't have to be right all the time. That's what I mm, learned. Yeah. Like you, you don't need to be right. That's good. That's yeah. It, I it, mean, it sounds so simple, but, but it's, it's, oh, it's but so it will it, it is the root of all that fights, probably money and inclusion. Like I haven't heard anyone say it, but that's right. Like he wants to be included, I want to be included. Yeah, it when we first got together, I was what? pretty good at not including. Well, he was like, because I was so used to being a solopreneur, you know, just like I'm. I have all this weight on my shoulders. Let me keep all this weight on my shoulders. It's my weight to hold, and. She would ask me, what's going on? I'm just like, hey, you know, I just can't. I don't feel like talking right now or I'm doing something or whatever. And, and it would turn into a very especially not good day for Especially women, we're problem solvers and we want to help fix it too. Yeah, and we she wanna, usually has a better take on it than I do most of the time. Or he'll take something so to heart or so heavy and I'm like, hey, look at it this way. Like I just... I didn't have that in the very beginning. So yeah, that includes. Yeah, we, we learned, I, I learned that. And I learned as I did that more, I our relationship got better. And also actually probably the turnout of most of those situations were better because she usually had a better take on it than I did. She was just like, why don't you just do this? I'm like, ah, oh. yeah, I was thinking that too, actually. <laughs> And probably wasn't even in my mind, but you know, she she just usually somebody else's perspective, and you and since she kind of had a she was in tune with what I was doing anyway, it really I think it helped it helped me. Yeah, inclusion will save it a lot of times. You know, just make sure you keep them included, give them a little download of what happened during the day, let them know you missed them, find out what you missed. You know, ask them about what happened in in the day, act interested, what happened while I was gone get involved like just that inclusion is everything trust me. absolutely mm -hmm. there's a lot of people in the world right now that are going through stuff and you know have lost their businesses or their businesses are struggling or maybe their businesses are doing good they're thinking about starting a business what advice would you give to those people that are that are you know they're they're worried that the world world's falling apart and uh, at the seams but what, what advice would you give them as uh, if they were look, seeking advice as entrepreneurs? Well, the first thing I'd tell them to do is go, right? What's the worst thing to happen, right? The, most people don't understand that there is a what's the worst that can happen mentality. That's, I think, my superpower. I think everyone's got one. And mine is I don't really care. You know what I'm saying? Like, like what's the worst that can happen, Dan? Yeah. Hey, I'm going to, I'm going to call Dan and present him with an opportunity. Ooh, dude, what if he says no? Yeah, you're right. I better not. <laughs> well, then what, what happened then? Right. Nothing. So what's That's the right. worst that can happen? He says no. So what? I'm in the same position right now. We're not doing business. Absolutely. Same thing with getting a girl or a guy, you know, you're looking at this beautiful woman. You're like, Oh, I don't want to do it in case she says no. Well, that just puts you in the position you're in now. Well, what's the worst that can happen? Mm -hmm. She says no. You know, what's the worst that can happen? You start a business. What's the worst that can happen? You go look for a job again. You mm -hmm. don't pay rent again. Like this is the first time that's happened. Right. Folks, don't be afraid to let go of what you have to reach for what you want. Too many people want to hold on to what they have in fear of losing it. When in reality, they don't want it. If they did want it, they'd be happy, but they're not. They want this. Well, then let go of this and reach for that. And don't worry about losing this. You have mm -hmm. to be willing to let go of what you have to get what you want. And most people aren't, they're, 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 they're in scarcity mindset. They think, they think, what if I fail? Well, what if you win? That's right. Yeah. What if you don't? That's uh, it's so true. It's so, yeah, you got to be willing to let go of what you mm -hmm. have to get what you want. That is, that is the perfect message 
for people and out there right now. Ta- how many pivots do most successful people go through anyway in life? Yeah, everybody's, I mean, even successful people yeah, pivot, have. you know, things don't work out for them and they decide they have to go Do a different direction else. or, or you know, change the business up a little yeah. bit. We're all going through those pivots. Mm. You know what's also true about successful people? We fail more than others. <laughs> that is true. People are out there, they're afraid to fail when in reality, if you look at all the successful people in the world, they're the ones that have failed the most yet, and we want what they have, but yet we're afraid to fail. Well, why are you afraid to fail? That's what's required. Like get out there and fail. Go, 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 go. So when you said, what advice would I give them? It's just go. Okay. Stop thinking about it. Start doing it. You'll learn But I'm not ready. Well, what if this happens? And what if that happens? No, just go. We'll figure it out. We'll figure it out. And, 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 and that's the number one advice I give people is just go quit worrying about shit. I mean, yeah. stop. One book, about doo-doo. one book you'd leave with your kids that help them with life. You know, I used to say how to win friends and influence people. That's my favorite book. Well, relationships is the key, man. Absolutely. I'm you. Folks, nobody's ever, ever got really, really, really successful alone. Period. It's never happened. That's right. People say, I'm a self-made entrepreneur. Well, what does that mean? I'm a self-made millionaire. No, you're not. Nobody is a self-made millionaire. Period. End the conversation. It's an impossibility to get millions by yourself. So I would teach them how to how to how to build friendships that, that are worth something. Number one. Number two. Now that I read the book, The Four Agreements, I switch it. I would I would give them the Four Agreements. That's the name of the book, The Four Agreements. Maybe this is the one you were supposed to. How did to I read. not read this Babe, book I, yet? It, your brain is blocking it out. I I <laughs> usually read the book as soon as I hear about it. I got to uh, absolutely. It's my next book on my on my list. And, and you know, short of saying, you know, I give them the Bible because that's what most cliche answers. Yeah. And and there's a lot of answers in the Bible. The problem I feel is the Bible tells us to seek and we shall find. So I'm I'm doing what I'm told, which is seeking. So I'm not necessarily sure what the exact story is. And I haven't agreed with any in particular, except for that there is a creator. And and so barring a biblical book or a, or a religion-based book, it would have to be the four agreements. The four agreements. Absolutely. It's my next book on my list. Did you hear that, everybody? The four agreements. I think I heard it once, one other time, apparently, and I forgot no, to write it. Oh, I didn't? Times. Oh, okay, great. And it's just come up in conversation in general. So it's a sign. It's a sign. Here's the deal. Here's the deal. If, if I were dying today, I brought my kids into a room and I had to know for sure that they were going to be all right and in every way possible. All I would say is get four agreements and do what it says. And I promise life will be wonderful. And then I'd pass. And if they did what I told them, their lives would be wonderful. You almost covered our last question that we ask everybody. Yeah. If you knew, we all have, you know, uh, a limited time here on earth. We're going to, if you were going to leave one piece of information to your kids, what would that be? Barring that book, what would you tell them? Well, I would tell them what's in the four agreements. Go read it. But, but, <laughs> yes. but the, the one other thing, because I already gave that answer, so I want to give more answers so people can consider more things. I would, I would tell them to not fear other people's judgment. You know, focus on your own judgment. In other words, don't worry so much about what other people think. You know, you you've heard the old saying. You know, live like nobody's watching or dance like nobody's watching or all that. Yeah, that's true. Because let me tell you something. Nobody cares, folks. Nobody cares. Nobody cares. Like you can say it all you want. Nobody cares. Like, you know, we're going to die in a hundred years from now. Most of us are never going to be talked about again. And and there's going to be a generation or two go and nobody cares that you live. Nobody cares what you thought. Nobody cares. Unless of course you make history which is my goal. But I would tell my kids that you don't need to factor in everybody else's opinion as much as people think they do. Like go make yourself happy. And if the rest of them don't like it, that's their business, but make yourself happy because you you can't make everyone happy. Right? So the lesson here is so many people are afraid of what other people think. They're afraid of the hate. Yeah, they'll never find the love. And I just want my kids to find the love. 
And in order to do that, you have to be willing to put yourself out there. So, so the people that love you make themselves known. More people don't put themselves out there. So they never find that love. They never find that fulfillment because they're so worried about what other people think. So good, Brad. You are, you, we absolutely love watching all of your stuff on mm. YouTube. If you guys are not following Brad Lee, be sure you need to right now because you will enjoy his content. And especially if you're selling anything, because yeah. this guy is, and we're all selling stuff, right? This guy is the consummate salesman. And where is your course? Oh, look at that. Yeah. It, Hello. You're not getting a turtle? Oh. Hi. You want to buy something for ten ninety nine ninety nine? Where's yeah. how many? Count the commas, honey. Hold on, hold on one second. See now, this is now this is another thing, folks. Anybody listening to this podcast, I want you to understand something. There might be people right now thinking, oh, look, how rude. Brad just answered his children's phone call during a podcast. And I want you to consider something. You should look at yourself if you're not willing to answer your child's phone call during a podcast. Absolutely. Because let me me tell you something. If anybody's offended that I took that call during a podcast, I wouldn't do that person's podcast. Because this might be an emergency. You know what I'm saying? So Amen. now that I know it's not, hold on one second. Hello. <laughs> Babe. Oh, you want to see me? <laughs> no worries. I love it. Oh, hi. Kitty. Hi, beautiful. Hi. So nice to meet you. You're frozen, honey. Hey, call me in five minutes. We'll get you a turtle. Love you. Now that I know it's not an emergency, I'll get back to what like it, I'm focusing on. And that's what I meant earlier when it's like squeaky wheel. When this phone rings and it's them, that's that's the loudest wheel in my book. Like mm-hmm. nothing can be louder than this phone ringing and it's my children or my family. I um, love this side of you, Brad. Well, again, I, you, you have to pause. You have to pause. And if you're doing business with someone, that's, I'm not going to deal with you because of your antics. Well, guess what? I don't want to deal with you anyway. I was just going to say that. And that's why I want my children to be entrepreneurs, because I want them to have the power to do what they feel is best and not be not be controlled by Mm. some other person's idea of of ethics and integrity. And the only way to do that is to be completely free of other people's opinions. Absolutely. That's right. That's 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 such a strong reason for being an entrepreneur. And to do business with who they want to do business with like that just. If we're doing a deal, I would say Brad, because he has the same um, the same priorities as we do in our life right now. So that's huge. It connected us. We were sitting in a boardroom and and, and let's say, Dan, I had you in there and we, we were about ready to make some massive deal. Two hundred million dollars. Your phone rang and you and you sent it to voicemail. So you so we didn't interrupt the deal. Versus somebody who who said, excuse me for one minute and answered the phone. I'm doing business with that guy. 100%. I am so with you, Brad, on that. That is how people treat other people and especially their own family is so important to who they are. And if you get a chance to see into that window, that's very important in who you want to do business with. It It makes a difference to me. And I'm glad it makes a difference to you. Thank you for sharing this time with us on the Pretty Punk Podcast, Brad. You've been amazing. Uh, Be sure you guys are all following Brad Lee, and that's L-E-A, just so you can uh, so you can find him. And And also, what's your book? Your book, your book. It's not out yet, is it? No, it's about to be. It's uh, it's called The Hard Way: Lessons I've Learned the Hard Way, so you don't have to. It's packed full of unbelievable things that you're going to learn anyway. Just how fast and how much it's going to cost you. And they can pre-order it though, right? Yeah, they can pre-order it at bradlee.com. We'll put a link. We'll, we'll put, put a, a link. link. And your courses. How can they get a hold of your courses? Because there's so much stuff out there right now. And you just go to closerschool.com. Closer school. And again, I'm not really a trainer. I'm not really a trainer. It's just I feel obligated to to help people with my knowledge. And my knowledge is how to masterfully build relationships and close deals. 
Mm. So I put it out there. It's all virtual. I'm not a coach. Don't call me for coaching. I don't do one-on-ones. I'm not trying to get you to my $25,000 mastermind, but it's there if you want to go through the content. Oh, that's amazing. Second to none, Brad. Love talking to you, man. And uh, I heard you were actually in our backyard. You're out here in Malibu and you didn't you didn't hit us up. Is that where you live? Yeah, we're in Malibu. We're right here waiting for you. Heard you were heard you were here. Be right on the beach, dude. I'll be back. Trust me, that house was. Oh my cool. gosh, our That's kids out. can get together and play. Yeah. Dude, okay. Every day, every day we'd go out the back, and the and the and the sand had no feet print in it. It was unbelievable. We, we have our kids back here playing with the Connect Four. The uh, yeah, we're oh, we're staring. This is the wa- nothing but water here. That's all we're looking at. We're right across from the beach here. Yeah, Lucky. yeah, <laughs> yeah. But we have to. It's a trade off with the size of the home. You know, it's like we did live in a big home, and the trade off comes when you come to the beach. You don't live in such a big home anymore. Yeah, yeah, but but it's still a big place. Yeah, yeah, that's right. It is. So next time you come out to Balibu, make sure you say, make sure you let us know because we want to take you out to to lunch. Yes. Absolutely. You and the family. Hugs to the wife and the babies. Thank you for sh- thank them for sharing you with us and uh, and we love you guys. We love you guys. We'll see you I soon. I mean, I, I I feel so connected. Like with that last, I'm sold. Yeah. I'm sold. Okay. Thanks, Brad. <laughs> thank you. We'll talk to you soon, brother. Take care. Okay. Bye. Bye. <laughs> That was great. So what did you think about Brad? Oh my gosh, he's incredible. You know what I loved? I loved that he he pulled back, like he truly pulled back the curtains. He shared some of his mistakes from the past. And I, I mean, I don't know if he realizes or not, but those are incredibly valuable lessons to other people listening it's yeah because i think a lot of people that are starting their businesses they are you know it's there's you have to plan your life out a little bit and if you're younger and you're trying to figure out you i mean you may already have a kid um uh, a child and you know i had kids younger and i think that everybody's trying to figure out how am i going to create my business and how am i going to raise my kids and brad said it perfectly that that Sometimes you just have to do it. You just have to make yourself, you can do it. There's a lot of entrepreneurs out there creating businesses and even with kids or, you know. Yeah, quit making excuses. Well, yeah, there aren't no excuses. Just do it. It's going to be a different journey. (laughs) I mean, I mean, the perfect example is we're doing a podcast (laughs) and this you can hear the kids running around it was i mean that was kind of crazy that's the most that they probably ever interfered in our (laughs) podcast and it made the most that i mean the truth is in between it made it hard to do the podcast it was Mm -hmm. true it's hard it's not easy sometimes i had to get up and then come back but at the same time she's not feeling well so do i you know do we quit and and not do the podcast today no we get up and we do it the way that we can and we push and, through and we and, push and sometimes through. that's just the way it is and if people don't want to listen to it because for that reason then so be it you know i mean that's <laughs> hopefully that's our audience. you that's got our audience. Yeah, parents understand and, oh my gosh did you not fall in love with him when he answered the phone for the baby uh, uh, for his baby i i call them babies forevermore even <laughs> when they're gonna be 102, they'll still be my babies. But just this is what brings me joy in the podcast and doing this podcast. The way his eyes lit up when his little bundle of joy called, like it just, I I get it. I felt it. And I said, if if this, this, if we ever end up doing business with this guy, like I know what he's like. I I I know his heart, I know his soul. And um, he was precisely right about the whole thing. Those yeah. are the kind of people I want to do this. It's with. great because Brad actually, he's got a great um, show. He does a YouTube show. and Yeah, it, so good. Dropping bombs. And uh, he's <laughs> it just, he's, you know, I I told him last time I talked to him, I said, I said, you're kind of a character, Brad. Like you have this way that you carry yourself and um, and especially on your podcast the, you know, he's, he, and he always lays down great advice for anybody who oh, wants yeah. to learn about business, great advice coming from him. And I, I really 
like how he kind of put that aside to talk about his family and he just really delivered today. So I hope you guys got a lot out of that because we did. And I enjoy hearing other entrepreneurs, you know, who've, who've been through struggle because it's mm. all, none of it's easy. You know, it's like, it's all work. It's just all worth it. At mm. the end of the day, it's work, but it's worth it. And, and so, everything he went through is a blessing for someone else. Really, it's a it's it's turned into a blessing because it's going to help someone. Someone out there right now is like, I needed to hear that today. And he's building these other little kids who are going to come up and be great, or some of them are big kids now, you know, be great entrepreneurs to live on mm. and, you know, continue his legacy uh, I thank you guys all for joining us today, this crazy day with the, <laughs> with the little ones <laughs> on this episode of the Pretty and Punk podcast. It was a really good one. Mm. If you like this and you know other people that are going through the same stuff and people who have maybe dealt with the same situations as Brad has, I hope you can share this on your social medias. I hope that you know there are other parents out there that need that need to know that other people are going through the same struggle, other parentpreneurs or entrepreneurs with kids, whatever you want to call them, that are going through the same type of stuff. So you sharing that with them helps them on their journey. Absolutely. And don't forget to tag us on Instagram, TikTok, wherever you are. We want to celebrate you doing your thing. We want to put the spotlight on you. So tag us. <laughs> So we can share you in this very thing. Yeah. Take a snapshot of yourself on the laptop, on your podcast, whatever you're doing. We're gonna we're gonna share you in your business because we love you. Yeah, and we hope you can leave a comment. We share all the comments with our kids, and they really love it. And they, it's the kind of they're going and the on reviews. this. Yeah, the rates and reviews. They're going on this journey <laughs> with us. So when we share it with them, they just that we let them know what's happening, and and we appreciate all those comments, rates, and reviews. So I, uh, we appreciate any of those that you uh, pass along. <laughs> and if you want to contact us, contact us at Pretty and Punk Podcast on Instagram and prettyandpunk.com. We appreciate all your messages. And remember, life doesn't happen to you. It, it happens, happens for, for you. you. Thank you for listening to the Pretty and Punk Podcast. Please subscribe. God bless.